Hey, uh, if this is your first time listening to the podcast, this is maybe not the one to start with. I mean, listen, follow your heart, but it'll probably be super confusing without some background on the story. That confusion in a moment, but first, I want to talk really quickly about a subject I haven't talked about in a while, and that's the Night Vale store. The Welcome to Night Vale store is carefully curated by the writers of Night Vale, working with a small team of artists that we know and love. Everything in there is something we were really excited about and wanted to show you. Brand new today, another in our continuing series of quote shirts. This one says, pain is just pain entering the body. Also, check out our recently released Moonlight All Night Diner apron, our Big Rico's Pizza pint glass, our new all over print tank top perfect for the summer, and hey, to highlight some older items, how about the Kashuk the Cat phone case by Noel Stevenson, or again, a great summer item, shorts, and bear with me here, shorts that say creepy on the butt. All of that and a lovingly handpicked more at welcometonightvale.com. Click on store. That's basically it. Quick rundown of live stuff before I go. This weekend in New York, the Nightvale cast and crew will be doing a panel at BookCon for the new novel It Devours. Hear an exclusive reading and talk to us. It'll be fun. Nightvale presents birthday party in a couple weeks in New York, featuring the debut of a brand new podcast from me and also a new podcast from Dylan Marin, plus surprise guests and an erotic reading that we're calling Night Vale After Dark. Then, in July, July, the U.S. tour of our new live show, All Hail, continues. Check out the Night Vale Instagram, Night Vale Official, for a taste of what this tour has been like. Get your tickets now. This fall, the Night Vale cast takes our show and the Glow Cloud to the U.K. and Europe. Tickets on sale for that now as well. Info on all of those at welcometonightvale.com. Click on shows. And finally, this December in Seattle, PodCon, brand new convention for podcast fans. We're helping to found PodCon.com. And hey... We're all doing our best. This is a story about Huntokar, said a voice on the radio. A voice you had never heard before, though she has been speaking to you your whole life. I am Huntokar, the destroyer. You have already been destroyed. You just don't know it yet. Once, long before this sorrowful now, there was only the mud womb. We gods waiting to be born. The woman from Italy, the distant prince, so many others. We waited for time and space to begin. In the mud womb, nothing ever happened. Even the idea of action was impossible. In the mud womb, you weren't yet but you knew that someday you would be. And then history began, and we scattered out into the light in the hours. How simple and easy everything seemed in those first few millennia. There was only ever one of anything. The woman from Italy dipped her hand into the stars, running her fingers through the great glowing coils of the universe. The distant prince explored every far-off cave and every out-of-the-way hole, all of the dark places. A cloud in the corner of the sky glowed, changing colors every second and dropping dead animals long before animals ever existed. I sat cross-legged in a lake for 10,000 years. But nothing lasts forever, not even us. Soon there were other beings in this universe and everything changed. The woman from Italy became fascinated at the pain that could be inflicted on these creatures. The distant prince began to shape some of them into wounded servants driven wild by what he had done to them. The glow cloud controlled the minds of any that got too close. And I? I thought I was the exception. I thought that I would nurture them rather than rule them. I was, of all of us, the only good one but it was I who would end up truly destroying them. I've spent every moment since my mistake trying to put back together what I took apart, but it is beyond me. Every action that endeavors to improve only causes more suffering and terror. Even my appearance, once a source of awe, is now to them strange and horrifying. Nothing fits together like it used to. Cecil. Sweet Cecil, who I tried and tried to guide toward the truth, but I could never quite say the words. I am the destroyer, 
I would say to him, but what could he make of that? My cowardice concealed the details of my crime. I couldn't bear to repeat them. Until now. I say this in every world at once. Everyone must understand what happened. This is a story about Huntakar, but is also a story about you and them and every poor soul who hears it. Of course, I say Cecil singular as though there were one of anything. But as we now know, there is not one of anything. There is a Cecil who would not listen. There is a Cecil who listened, but could not comprehend. There is a Cecil who did his utmost, but who failed. There is a Cecil who was gone long before I came. There is Cecil and Cecil and Cecil, and then there is me trying to explain to him over and over about the choice I made. But all that ever comes out is the truth. I am Huntokar, I say. I am the destroyer. All true. All useless. Each of us in those early days chose our domains. The glow cloud in the clouds. The distant prince in the distance. The woman from Italy, everywhere but Italy. We could each of us do whatever we wanted in the places that we chose. There was no criteria for my choice. I came across a valley, dry, almost lifeless, save for a few brave people who had worked out how they could be sustained there. And I chose them. I guided and taught them. And gradually a town grew. Night Vale the one place in the world that was truly mine. I am the creator. And it was, I suppose, in the moment that I first felt love for my creation, that the fuse for the unraveling of all things was lit. Although it would not happen for many centuries, at the very inception of my greatest satisfaction and happiness, this tragedy became inevitable. Worship of me started as they became aware of my kind presence in their lives. Their love gave meaning to the passing of my years, and in exchange, I gave them a better and better world. They developed ceremonies devoted to me, wearing soft meat crowns and building what would become known as bloodstone circles. And this is how it was for a long time. Night Vale was not a place with any distinction to anyone in the world, except for me who watched over it and loved it. A love that would spell its end. Now, in this destroyed world, I am forgotten. Still they have bloodstones and still they worship, but never does anyone ask, what is being worshipped in those circles? Why do we have all of this meat strapped to our heads? What once was tribute is now a series of gestures as human and meaningless as they were before I came along. They see glowing arrows in the sky, dotted lines and circles, and they think nothing of them. Air traffic, space debris, weird birds. They do not, cannot, will not read the messages from their God. The only ones that truly remember me are the oldest ones, the ones that stand outside of time. The faceless old woman who came to this country trying to find some answer to a long ago betrayal. She remembers me, although she would never speak up for me. Her ways are ways of sorrow and they only lead her to herself. She is a closed loop of a person. The glow cloud remembers me but can do no more than flash welcoming colors to say hello. I have no human mind it can control, so there is no way for us to speak. And of course, the others, the distant prince, the woman from Italy, the five-headed dragons, that beagle, they know exactly who I am. And more's the doom of Night Vale for that. The path to this destruction was laid by the humans. They invented a bomb of utter dread, a weapon so horrible it could never be used, and then threatened to use it. Fools. They faced across the water, 
squabbling over misunderstood ideas and announcing in louder and louder voices that they were prepared to end their species history over a point of pride. Some of the gods encouraged it, enjoying chaos and fear as entertainment and spreading paranoia as they moved through the world. I tried to keep Night Vale calm, but even my children weren't immune to the growing fear. And then the day came, November 7, 1983. A practice Armageddon mistaken for the real thing, and so, through this misunderstanding, transformed into actual Armageddon. <laughs> the power of a fearful thought. The bombs were in the air. There were only minutes left. The people of Night Vale huddled, waiting for the end to their story. I could see it as it was about to happen. I could see the flash and the tower of fire, the heat that transforms a body into only its shadow the slow sickness and the dying of crops. I could see starvation and a winter that would not end. I could see all of this as though it had already happened. I looked up into the sky as the people around me wept and said goodbye to each other. And I saw something else, a planet of awesome size lit by no sun, an invisible titan, all thick black forests and jagged mountains and deep, turbulent oceans. It hung so close that it filled the entire sky. And that was the moment that I decided, no, I would save them. I would save the town I created. I am the savior. It was a simple idea. I would have to remove Night Vale from this ending world. I didn't know if it would work. I'd never seen any god try this. But I only had minutes, and I knew that I must save my only town. I was naive, but lovingly so. You should not forgive me just because I had love in my heart. Intentions never matter. Night Vale would stand alone, disconnected from all of the rest of the universe, but safe. Or that was what I thought. No action is without consequence. I am the destroyer. What happened next was a horrible cracking noise. A noise like I had never heard before, like no one had ever heard before because this particular thing had never been broken, not in the history of all possible histories. When I tried to lift Night Vale out of the world it belonged in, I shattered reality. And I did not shatter reality just in my Night Vale, but in all Night Vales, all Night Vales that were or could be, every possible night veil in every possible universe broke simultaneously and fell into each other. There was a night veil exactly like my night veil, but in which on a single day, a single citizen wore a green shirt instead of a yellow shirt. There was a night veil that had grown into a great metropolis, skyscrapers and crowds and little bars where people sat and talked about the great things they would write when they stopped going out to little bars so much. There was a night veil that never was, in a world where humans never came to be. There was a night veil in which old woman Josie would never die, and there was a night veil in which she had never lived. There was a night veil in a world that had flooded, and this town floated on the water and thrived, its lights spreading iridescent over the waves like an oil slick. There was a night veil in which there was no Hunto car, and this town should have been safe from me, but then all of the other night veils fell into it and it too was destroyed by my action. Every night veil then, every night veil now, every night veil past and present, every town with every possible person making every possible important and unimportant choice, all of them, a fractal of night veil, an endless iteration of Cecil and citizens. And in my moment of foolish hope, in my belief that I could save anything, I reached out my clumsy hand and destroyed them all. <sighs> I guess here is where Cecil would say it, so. Cecil, I'll say it for you. Let's take a look at the weather.
Night Vale is shattered, but for now is still here. <laughs> Time is startlingly persistent in that way. Even badly wounded, it moves. And so the towns, every possible version of the town, balance precariously on their broken reality. Some versions of the town fell completely into other versions, becoming folded in their reality in unexpected combinations. Others merely open borders with my original Night Vale, doorways through which travel was possible, but not advisable. For a while, I believe we could go on like this. If we only put our heads down and insisted on living, without looking at or considering the world around us, we could just keep moving. And the main thing was to keep moving. Denial was key. As long as we denied, then nothing was wrong. The other gods were attracted to the sight of my teetering domain, but I was able to arrange truces with them. They did not do anything that would upset the balance by which my world barely hung. And in exchange, they could poke their heads in, look around, maybe take a few versions of my Night Vale to turn into playgrounds for their terror-filled delights. Others were drawn, not only gods. There were those that came to help, like the angels that Night Vale denied as strongly as they denied their own situation. And there were those who came for debased purposes of their own, like those awful men in their awful crates. The important thing wasn't a life worth living. The important thing was just a life that continued. But now the five-headed dragons in their grief and anger have pulled all of the other gods into this situation. And uh, our fragile truce is ending. The cracks are widening. All possible night bells are opening up to each other. There will never be only one of anything ever again. When all realities are real, sense cannot be made. Everything at once is essentially nothing at all. I have tried so hard to keep Night Vale moving forward, unaware of what had happened to it, blissfully ignorant. But my efforts end here. The world is finally falling apart, piece by piece, and I stand by all the powers of my thousands of years, and I can only watch it fall. <laughs> Cecil, sweet Cecil, whose life lies directly on the fault lines of this broken reality, he narrates his own ending without realizing it is his ending. He does not understand what is happening to him. And so, here I am, telling you this story so that, at least in your destruction, you will understand who has destroyed you. And you will understand that she destroyed only out of a loving desire to save you. May you perceive her as foolish and naive rather than monstrous. Even as I speak, I look up into the sky and see that dark planet of awesome size perched in its sunless void, an invisible titan of thick black forest and jagged mountains and deep, turbulent oceans. It's so close now. I can see it just above me. Maybe even if I tried very hard, I could touch it. This has been a story about Huntakar. She who thought she could save. She who, in saving, instead destroyed. I am the storyteller. The story may do you no good, <laughs> but a story is never for the listener. It is always for the one who tells. Good night, my night bill. Good night. Welcome to Night Vale is a production of Night Vale Presents. It is written by Joseph Fink and Jeffrey Craner and produced by Joseph Fink. The voice of Hunt O'Carr was Tina Parker. 
Original music by Disparition. All of it can be found at disparition.info or at disparition.bandcamp.com. This episode's weather was Full Metal Dark by The Royal They. Find out more at theroyalthey.bandcamp.com. Comments, questions, email us at info at welcome to nightvale.com or follow us on Twitter at Night vale Radio or use Google Street View to take a slow, leisurely walk in a city you'll never visit. Check out welcome to nightvale.com for more information on this show and a ton of amazing t-shirts and lab coats and other weird Night vale things we've made with a small team of incredible artists. And while you're there, consider clicking the donate link. You can have Cecil talk to you personally. It's all in that link. Today's proverb, less is more. Simplification is the way to happiness. You are not your things. Anyway, thanks for your wallet. Bye.